Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Bible study. It is Lesson 2, titled A Life of Love, part of the series A Life Beyond Amazing. It is based on Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 to 2. Here we discover what it means to love others the way God loves us. It is ironic that what the world needs more than anything is something the world knows little about, and that is true love, the biblical kind of love. While modern love in the world is me-centered, biblical love is other-centered. We are to love others the way Jesus Christ loves us. Nothing is more talked about, sung about, joked about, and written about, and less understood today than love. Is loving pizza really supposed to be the same as loving God or one's spouse? People like the idea of love, and most people desperately want to be loved, whatever that means to them. But most people don't understand love, true love, at all. The Bible mentions love hundreds of times. Of course, it is the core theme and God's redemptive plan for man. For God so loved the world. John chapter 3 verse 16. Love is also the first of the nine dimensions of the fruit of the Spirit mentioned by Paul. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. Not to mention that God himself is love. 1 John chapter 4, verse 8 and 16. When we talk about the kind of people we should be from a biblical perspective, we must begin with love. Because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Love is not just a sentiment or a feeling. Love is action. It's impossible to read Paul's love letter, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, without seeing the actions that are implied. Biblical love is selfless and sacrificial, always doing what is best for others. That is the kind of love the world is missing. Prior to Christ's love, the pagan world was self-centered. But Jesus' love was so different from anything anyone had seen before, that it was given a special name. They called it agape love. One of the best definitions of agape love is this. Agape love is the power that moves us to respond to someone's needs with no expectation in return. We love others without waiting for them to say thank you. We love as a choice. It is predicted by our values and our beliefs, not on our expectation of anything in return. The ultimate illustration of that kind of love is the cross of Calvary, where Jesus died willingly and sacrificially for us. We were totally unworthy. We often do not respond gratefully, yet Jesus loved us all the same. Another Greek word, philanthropia, and the verb philio is used extensively in the New Testament. It is the word for tender affection or unusual kindness, Acts chapter 28, verse 2. Note that Philadelphia in Pennsylvania is called the city of brotherly love, based on the Greek philio and adelphos, for love and brother. Today we will talk about imitating God's love for us as a template for how we are to love one another. Imitate God, therefore. Live a life filled with love following the example of Christ. Ephesians chapter 5 verses 1 to 2. We are commanded to be people of love. Love is a command, not a suggestion or an option. This confuses the world because it is used to the idea of falling in love. Love is something that just happens. Love is out of our control. But that is not the biblical idea of love. Over and over in the New Testament, we are commanded to love. 
13 of those commands are for us to love one another. We sometimes think Christ's kind of agape love is impossible and we justify failing to love others. But would Christ command us to do something he doesn't give us the power to do? That's why love is a fruit of the Spirit. Quote, by the Spirit's empowerment, we can love others as Christ loves us. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. God has deposited his love in us. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. But it is up to us to put that love into action by actually loving others. We need to cultivate love. After Paul's beautiful chapter on love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the very next thing he writes is, Pursue love, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 1. He describes love in chapter 13 and then immediately says, Now, pursue it. Put it into action. There is a paradox here, isn't there? We are given love as a gift from God that the Spirit manifests as a fruit of His presence. But it is up to us to pursue it. Love is a gift we are giving to use, not to put on a shelf and admire. But we know it is not easy. It takes work to love others. No Christian is exempt from the responsibility to love others with the Christ-like love. You may struggle to love, but that doesn't excuse you. We have God's love as an example of how we are to love one another. Here are five ways to become a more loving person. Number one, reflect on God's love for you. You probably know John chapter 3 verse 16 by heart. Quote, by this we know love because he laid down his life for us and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Unquote. And 1 John chapter 4 verses 11 to 12 carries a similar message. My point is that one of the ways we learn to love others is by considering how much God loved us. We must love others the same way. The first medal of honor awarded for combat in Afghanistan went posthumously to Lieutenant Michael Murphy, a Navy SEAL. He and his team members, three team members, were surrounded and trapped by more than 50 Taliban fighters. They fought until they ran out of ammunition. To get a clear radio signal to call for help, Lieutenant Murphy exposed himself to enemy fire, being shot twice in the back while calling for help. One of the team survived because his commander gave up his own life in an attempt to get help for the whole team. That's an example of sacrificial love, laying down one's life for another. John chapter 15 verse 13. That is the love that the modern me generation knows little of. We must guard against absorbing the world's definition of love and consider how God loves us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans chapter 5 verse 8. That is God's kind of love. Lieutenant Murphy's men were trapped by the enemy and he gave his life to save them. Likewise, we were trapped by the power and penalty of sin and Jesus gave up his life to save us. Medal of Honor love is awesome. But cross of Calvary love is the ultimate. As we reflect on that love, we will be reminded to love the same way. Secondly, pursue genuine love. We need to pursue love that is without hypocrisy. Romans chapter 12 verse 9. You know, someone says, how are you? Our automatic answer is often fine, but are we fine? We are in the habit of living lives that are not transparent and honest. If we are going to love with a pure heart, we need to love without hypocrisy. Our love and our life need to be sincere. Pastor Ray Ortland has pointed out how the beautiful uh, one another commands in the New Testament 
don't include commands like these humble one another pressure one another corner one another shame one another instead the predominant one another command in the new testament is to love one another when we begin to love one another with a pure christ like kind of love the world will begin to take notice just as jesus said they would quote by this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another unquote john chapter 13 verse 35 Jesus' love is a pure love and ours must be pure as well. How will the world know we are followers of Jesus? By our church attendance? Our financial contributions? By the time we spend in prayer? Those are good things that may attract the attention of the world, but Jesus said nothing about them. He said only one thing would tell the world we are his love. when christians uh, whether individuals or groups can get along with one another the world takes it as a negative message about jesus but if you love jesus's way the world will take that as a positive message about him pursue love not the world's kind of love but the genuine love by which god first loved us thirdly pray for greater love This next step may seem obvious but how often do we do it pray for greater love if loving others is a challenge in general or perhaps the challenge is loving a particular individual then pray and ask god for the grace to love unconditionally and sacrificially the apostle paul is a role model for us we can follow his example as he prayed for others to love well writing to the philippians he told them of his prayers that their love may abound still more and more philippians chapter 1 verse 9 he wanted the philippians to love even more so he prayed that they would paul also prayed the ephesians would come to know the width the length the depth and the height of god's love ephesians chapter 3 verses 18 to 19 if paul prayed for a greater realization and practice of god's love for first century christians why shouldn't we pray for the same thing for ourselves and others in fact it probably should be a permanent addition to every believer's prayer list lord help me to love with a genuine love the way christ loves me god wants us to be loving people he doesn't mind if we ask him to help us and if you have somebody in your life who is not very loving toward you and others pray for them that god would give them greater love too fourthly don't be afraid to risk this is a challenge for many of us don't be afraid to risk loving others don't be afraid to obey the commands of scripture and leave the results to god Sometimes when we try to love or help another person they repay us with an ungrateful attitude or action none of us likes to be hurt so it's tempting just to withhold love rather than risk getting wounded but that is not a reason to withhold love for anyone many people especially younger people may declare they love for someone who then leaves them behind they swear they will never love again better to not love than to love and get hurt those people must heed the words of cs lewis quote to love at all is to be vulnerable love anything and your love will certainly be wrong and possibly broken if you want to make sure of keeping it intact you must give your heart to no one not even to an animal wrap it carefully round with hobbies and little luxuries avoid all entanglements lock it up safe in the casket or coffin of your selfishness but in that casket safe dark motionless airless it will change it will not be broken it will become unbreakable impenetrable and irredeemable the alternative to tragedy 
or at least to the risk of tragedy, is damnation. The only place outside heaven where you can be perfectly safe from all the dangers and perturbations of love is hell. We must trust God. What we sow, we shall reap. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. If you sow love, you may not reap immediately, but God always rewards obedience to his word and will do so if we will step out in faith and love. Finally, last but not least, we must practice love every day. We are to be imitators of God and walk in love. Ephesians chapter 5 verses 1 to 2. Walking means taking one step at a time. Walking for a young child means falls and failures. But the more they try, the more they practice. Walking becomes second nature. When we love in everything we do, the better we will become at loving in every situation and toward every person. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 14. Learning to love every day doesn't mean one big love project where we show the world how loving we are. Instead, it means loving in the small daily matters that challenge us and test our commitment to God and his word. Especially in these situations where no one is watching, where no reward is likely and where we stand a chance of being hurt for our efforts. Sometimes we are tempted to uh, make a show of our love, like putting a thousand dollar check in the offering on Sunday. Craig Larson has a better idea. God sends us to the bank and has us cash in the thousand uh, dollar bill for quarters. We go through life putting out 25 cents here and 50 cents there. Listen to the neighbor's kids' troubles instead of saying, get lost. Go to a committee meeting. Give a cup of water to a senior in a nursing home. Usually, giving our life to Christ isn't glorious. It's done in all those uh, little acts of love, 25 cents at a time. So, yield to the command to love. Cultivate love and implement the challenges to become a more loving person. That is the way we learn to love others as God loves us. Grace and peace to all under the influence of my voice. I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health as you prosper in his word. Amen.